Welcome back. We are now being joined by Sarah Abrahams, who is the Deputy Associate Commissioner for Prevention and Early Intervention, which is a division of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Sarah, certainly a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. Tell us more about PEI. It does go unnoticed, but your department is really making sure that the children don't fall into the foster care or adoption system in the first place. One of the things that prevention and early intervention is working on across the state and in the valley is to really work with families before there's a crisis, before they, before their struggle really brings them to child protective services or to juvenile justice and to provide that support up front. And I, it's amazing that there's all these departments really working towards that goal, but certainly here in the valley, what you, what can you tell us about the motions, the movement, the initiative that is going on? What's really exciting about what's happening in the Valley is that there's a number of providers that are really coming together mm. and starting to collaborate, to share data, to share information, and really work together to help families. In the Valley alone, we serve almost 6,000 families wow. through programs from kiddos who are babies to kiddos who are 17 and their families. And of course, the goal is always to ensure that they don't fall into that system. But what are the preventative measures that you try to get to these families before it's too late? How does that all work? Some of it is just providing information, helping to guide them towards the right resources or helping them to access programs. Sometimes it's a more intensive intervention, early home visiting or helping them to connect to respite care or counseling. Certainly. Now, always a question is usually CPS gets a hold of the child and gets the information, whether it's from a teacher, a school family member. In this case, how does it work for PEI? These programs are all voluntary. They're really for families who are seeing that they're struggling and are reaching out for help. They can self-refer, they can be referred by their health care provider, by their teacher, by a member of their church or their community. So it's a, it's a pretty open process. And certainly important out there if you do need that extra help, that extra support system, it never hurts. Certainly we don't want to see any more Valley uh, children into the foster care and adoption system. Thank you so much for being here with us, Sarah. We appreciate it. For anyone that wants more information, where should they go? Um, the best place to go is our uh, website, which is helpandhope.org, um, and that will both give some information and connect them to local resources. Very good, Sarah. Thank you for joining us today.